three, two, one. Hello lads and ladies and welcome back for another video on the channel. We are back for some more Skybet League One content. We do quite a bit of it on this channel from live streams to you know, top tens to reviewing seasons to reviewing teams. Quite a lot of different you know, League One you know, content over here. But today we're going to have a look at the table. We're 50% of our way through the Skybet League One season. Almost, we're nearly at Christmas. Kind of the busiest period of the year. You know, this Easter and the end of the season. You know, the, the three, you know, my favourite moments of the season, really. And you know, Christmas can make and break a season. It's just before January. We're here to review the season, but we're not going to do it alone. We're here with my good mate, the Jack Ward. Football podcast, my mate from T Lop. Uh, Jack, how are we doing, mate? Yes, I'm good, mate. It's great to be here. It's great to be here. I've, it's been a while. I think the last time I was on here was probably the draft we did on your channel at the end of last season. So it's great to be back, mate. It's great to chat about League One. It's, like you say, hitting a, a very, very exciting time where football is being crammed into pretty much every day where you're not stuffing your face at Christmas, which is fantastic. So yeah, it's great to be here, mate. And I can't wait to join the conversation. Absolutely. You are an Oxford fan, so things are going quite well. Oxford, new manager, you know, kind of first win at yeah. the weekend. How big was that? Because 3-0, Ruben Rodriguez getting two up to six for the season, a clean sheet. And when you look at it now, now you've won that game, you can say, oh, I've only lost two in five. We played Bolton. You've went the way at Reading, which is a bit of a derby. You've won your first home game. You had a few tricky, you know, opening games in there. Let's be honest about it. But you know, went away at Peterborough, I know you got beat. But it's been a probably the you know top top you know top five game. Burton had a new manager, local derby, Peterborough, Bolton, and Cheltenham were improving under Daryl Clark. Mm. Yeah, it wasn't a nice set for, for Des to walk into. And I think what we've what we've seen since is him change a few things and him sort of I think he came in at a really weird time. When you come in normally as a new manager, you're coming into a side that is deflated, that's not getting results, it's not where it should be. He came into a football club that was massively achieving you know was second or third when he walked through the door they were in a fantastic place and we were really really flying and you know we're still third of the table after what was a pretty tricky run like you just mentioned there we're still third that's how open this league one season is even at this point in the campaign so yeah he didn't have some nice games chucking them away is, is pretty tricky but the performance wasn't great that's got to be said uh peterborough away again a very tricky game one of the most if not the most informed side in the league alongside pompey they're now in second we got battered comfortably there. We shouldn't have um, put in that type of performance. It was really, really below par. But like you say, you know, it's a, it's a difficult game for sure. And then Burton, who are, you know, struggling a lot. They haven't got a manager now. And we beat them, you know, very, very easily, I'd say. And I don't think that's being arrogant. I think, to be honest, they were um, well below par. And, and we did we did well. I think it was one of those where we were good and, and they were really poor. The scoreline probably does reflect that. So, yeah, it's been a, a, a tricky. And then they say Reading as well. It's... Is, is not nice. And to be fair, you look at the Lincoln point they got at the weekend, I'd probably now take a point. If you look at the games coming up and the fact we have got to carry on this good run, well, we've got to win these games that, that do look, dare I say, in League One winnable. So yeah, it, it wasn't a nice you know opening few games for, for Des, but we've sort of seen him change a few things, go back to what we were sort of brought him in to do, which was not just carry on the good work, but also develop himself as a coach and develop us and make, you know, ultimately make us better because we, we could be better. We didn't walk in with us 10 points clear at the top of the table. There was still work that needed to be done and there were still aspects of our, our play that needed to be developed and to be improved. And we're sort of seeing with Des in these early stages that he is you know, just going back to maybe the principles that we saw him play and, and use him at Mumbai City, which is what we brought him in to do. Although keeping those key elements that have got us in the position that we find ourselves in now. So yes, mate, it's been good um, on the whole you know, really across the season. It's been a bit up and down, losing a manager in the middle of it. But yeah, good week, a uh, good week, um, really on reflection. You take four points in the last week, um, but important win for, for Des Buckingham in his first game um, as a as a winning League One manager anyway. Humongous. Now, again, not just Oxford, but there's a few teams that have not just struggled in the last four games, but the last 14, 15, 16 games. And there's a reason why they're down there. Now, this is currently the state of play at the bottom end of of Skybet yeah. League One. Quickly, now, in my opinion, bar the bottom seven, which are Wickham, Burton, Exeter, Carlisle, Fleetwood, Reading and Cheltenham. Reading deducted 4.19 points without that deduction. 
And obviously, Wigan got deducted eight. Wigan upwards, Wigan, Cambridge, Port Vale, Leighton Orient and Shrewsbury, I think will be delighted with their starts to the season. Wigan, I think, can push for the top 12. I think they're that good. But to be, you know, seven points, you know, clear of 23rds after being deducted at eight points, a lot of people have them not to do quite as well, a eh, Wardy? Um, and, you know, Cambridge as well, you know, people have them in the bottom four, myself included, Port Vale, right. Andy Crosby getting beat 7-0 on the opening day of the season. You know, late knowing that just come up and I had them around about 16th area. They've only just won their first game in nine, so they slipped down a bit. Shrewsbury are at your 13th and they've only scored 13 goals. That's the only thing I think they'll be disappointed with. But that bottom seven... Uh, Wardy, Wickham have gone on a right, you know, slog of bad results. Before the weekend, hadn't scored in five and they're just so slowly teetering back into that kind of bottom area. After years of good work in Skybet League One, they did manage to find themselves getting a late penalty at the weekend. Where do you see the chair boys at the moment? Because they're nowhere near the standard that they have been in the last kind of two, three, four, no, even five years. Injuries have hurt them this season a lot. I think if you look at their injury record and their long list of injuries they've had, they've been massively hindered by them. Um, some some really key players are not available for, for large amounts of the season at the moment. And we're sort of seeing that squad being tested. And when you haven't got loads and loads of depth, and you've got a great, you know, we saw when, when Wickham were at the top end of the League One table a few, well, I'll say a few weeks ago, it's been longer than that now, probably a few months ago, that that, that team looked like a really, really good transformed 11. They sort of transitioned into a, a, a much uh, more attractive, and I don't think even Gareth Ainsworth would mind me saying that, a much more tr- attractive uh, Wickham outfit. You know, look, under Gareth Ainsworth, it was very, very different. It was results-based, it was extremely direct, and it was very, very effective. But Bloomfield's come in and he's tried to change that and they're looking to play in a different way. And you know, with that squad as it is, they've got some great talent, but players like Freddie Potts, who was incredible at the start of the season, him being injured is massive. And you have Hanlon, who's a great talent. He's going to be out for the rest of the season. These are some key, key players that aren't going to be about. And I'm, look, I, couldn't, I could carry on naming them, but ultimately there's some really, really big figures in that club that are playing a massive part in the early stages that have been out. Um, and that squad is, you know, not at a point because they've had to rebuild that squad and that squad isn't going to be rebuilt with lots of depth options over just one summer. I think they are going to stick with Bloomfield. I don't think his job is going to be at risk unless they get themselves into a really, really dangerous relegation conversation, which I don't think they will be. I think there are plenty of teams below them that are worse than Wickham. And when those players do eventually come back, they will be absolutely fine. So, yeah, it's it's strange, isn't it? Because like you say, Wickham, we're used to, you know, used to seeing them in the, in the top ends of the, of the table. But you've got to remember they're going through a difficult uh, time when it looks when, you know, when it, on injuries ultimately and in suspensions and, and players unavailable but also they're trans, you know, transforming as a side stylistically and there's going to be a bit of growing pain there so yeah it, it's strange mate I, where, where do I see the end of the season probably around 12th to be fair I think there's going to be a mid-table finish for Wickham yeah I, I could see them improving and teams that do need to improve are in those bottom six places with them um, Burton again on a bit of a slouch at the moment. Exeter no wins in twelve. They did get the third draw in that period. They have managed to get a couple of points. You know, it's St James Park and that point away from home at Stevenage at the weekend. Fleetwood as well haven't scored in six and a half games. Lee, you know, Lee Johnson came in. There was a bit of a boost. Six games unbeaten, and how changed? You know, times have changed in that last kind of three or four week period and Fleet would need to get to January. They could be without Jack Marriott and they are without Josh Bella for the weekend trip to the top of the league. Portsmouth, Fleet would seem to be in a bit of a rut right now, but things need to change at the Cod Army. Cheltenham are bottom of the league, although they are bottom of the league. At one stage on Saturday, they were only three points adrift, um, you know, of that relegation yeah. market because they were winning against Leighton Orient. But things changed in football. They were pulled back down to 10 men, you know, earlier in the game. And Leighton Orient made them pay with two very late goals. But Ward, when you look at that bottom four, Reading and Carlisle interest me because Reading have improved of late. They've actually scored 10 in the last five and they've much improved. They went to Wickham and got a result. They managed to get a point against, you know, your boys and you saw them close hand on Tuesday. You know, uh, Jakey Boy saw them on on Saturday as well. And you know, they were OK against us. They were competitive. They've done OK in cup competitions as well. And new ownership could come in there as well in January, which could be huge. And Mike Ashley rumoured to, to be going in there as new owner. Obviously, you know, 
his business at Newcastle, look, as an owner, he wasn't great, but he is a shrewd business owner and he will make sure the players are getting paid and the staff are getting paid, which is the most important thing. And Carlisle are also getting new ownership. There's never really any issues there, but they've also got funds that they haven't got. You know, you know, previously. So, could you see a change in in fortunes for those two? I know that Carlisle just um, this morning on Monday signed uh, Luke Armstrong from uh, from Harrogate, who who was meant to go to Wrexham in the summer, but uh, unfortunately things didn't quite go through on the final day. Yeah, I, I think the ownership at, at Carlisle is, is quite exciting for them. They've sort of said quite a lot about how excited they are about the funds they could be receiving and the money they could be spending on players. I think I went on Gab Sutton's show a couple of weeks ago and there was a Carlisle fan on there speaking about the takeover I think the day it went through and he was sort of saying that from speaking to these American owners and look, to be honest with you, American owners can be hit and miss. Let's be quite frank, they've had a good record and a few bad records in England when taking over football clubs. But this one seems to be really, really promising. Um they seem really excited about the fact that they are looking to spend more money than they ever have done on players. And again, that can go one of two ways. But if it goes the right way, you're building a squad there that's going to be safe. I think you've got to see where it goes. You've got to see where it goes. The first job of this Carlisle ownership is to steer this side out of the relegation zone and, and get them to safety. And then over the summer, you can start making some big changes. You've got to get the players in now, but you can't sign loads and loads of players because that can have the opposite effect. That can disrupt the entire team. Signing someone ahead of the 1st of January does show ambitious, uh, show ambition, but again, you, you don't want to be doing that for five or six, seven players because suddenly that squad is, is looking in a really, really dismantled place. And you don't want to be doing a summer rebuild and a summer reshuffle in the middle of January because there's a lot of games coming over this period and you can't be reshuffling too much because it can mm. get even worse. So there are going to be funds available there. You've got to be quite shrewd with it. They'll be fully aware of that. I'm not the businessman they are. They don't have to, you know, I haven't got to give them financial advice, but I can tell you that they've got to be very, very intelligent with the way they do it because sides have got themselves into trouble when trying to bring in too many elements at the key points of the season. Leave that for the summer, but get the key business done in January, being a little bit more shrewd and intelligent. And Luke Armstrong, I think, is a really good way of starting that. Um, as for Reading, yeah, I saw them play on, on Tuesday. And look, to be honest with you, in terms of their overall quality, I wasn't blown away at all. Uh, they got a point against Oxford. Of course, we were still sort of going through that sort of difficult run that we hit at the back end of la back end of the last month and this month so far. But of course, that's sort of been steered away over the weekend. But you know, looking at our performance on Tuesday, it wasn't great and nothing like the one on Saturday. And to be fair, you look at their performance, Reading on on Saturday against Lincoln, they're much better in that game. So I actually think it was probably just two pretty poor sides going head to head um, on that night. So judging them on that solely isn't fair. Um, but you know, with, with Reading, you, you really don't know that they're, they're well and truly still in that in in that conversation to stay in the league. They have got talent in there. They have got some good players. They have got to in, increase that depth because there's a lot of players in there that I just don't think are good enough. Sellers, I think, is a really exciting coach. He did well at Southampton, really, in the grand scheme of things when he came in and clearly got a decent job. Um, you know, at League One, he wanted to get straight back into management, and he's done that. But yeah, they both they both do need money to spend. I think right now, in terms of who looks the most secure and and really stable. It would have to be Carlisle, though, to be fair, wouldn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Now, moving briefly on to the top half of Skybet League One, Northampton and Bristol Rovers, Lincoln in there as well. Charlton, I want to touch on in just a bit. Those three teams are in the next bracket above those that are just below them in Shrewsbury, Leighton, Oi, Port Vale, Cambridge and Wigan. Wigan came those kind of and upwards. They've all gone on, on Apache runs and gone, you know, a few games without result, or a few games without a goal. I think it was six without a goal for Shrewsbury. Leighton Orient failed to win in eight. I know they drew, you know, a majority of those. You know, Port Vale didn't win in 13 until they beat extra last um, time out as well. Wigan went through a spell where they kept losing twos and threes um, as well. And we worried for them. And they won three uh, three games back to back, all by the scoreline of 2 0, and managed to beat Peterborough at home um, in there as well. And what those clubs, Northampton, Bristol Rovers, Charlton, really Lincoln have is the ability to not lose games and draw them or find a way to get something. I still think they're lacking a little bit in terms of playoffs, but Northampton, Bristol Rovers, I think will be happy. Lincoln will be happy, frustrated because the scene's been hampered with injuries and kind of frustrating draws. They've drawn 18 of the last 33 home games, so that's frustrating, but but Charlton probably the only one in that bracket that you kind of think that could go on the run because they've got the players, the Blackett Taylors, your Dobsons, your Alfie Mays. Where do you see that bracket from ninth, Wardy, down to around about 17th? 
Yeah, I, I agree. I think I think Charlton and Lincoln are are the two that that stand out, not just because they're ninth and tenth, but I think you look at that and the other clubs below them are sort of in different places. I think Bristol Rovers, Matt Taylor's come in, really good result of the weekend, and and you look at what he wants to do there. He's got a very very good record of taking clubs like you know, that really are happy where they are, but and he, he can take them to the next level. I know Exeter got them, you know, he got them promoted into into uh, League One and, and really before he left for Rotherham, they're in a really, really good promising play. So, you know, he's got a really good record of oozing every bit of talent out of a squad that maybe doesn't shout and scream. And actually, Bristol Rovers' squad is, is is a very, very good one and one of the better ones in, in League One that, had, that was underachieving under Joey Barton. So, yeah, he's going to be, I, I think, quite excited about the proposition he's got ahead of himself. And I think he, that that is an interesting um Conversations that the Bristol Rovers could get in that in that playoff chat. Long way to go. I think January could be pivotal, as it could be for a lot of clubs. I'm not quite convinced this season, but who knows? Charlton, I think you're right. If Charlton start, you know, getting some good points and then stopping the bad points because they are sort of really uh, relying on draws right now, they could well and truly be in the in the chat. You can't go and, and, and be 2 0 up at home to Cambridge and, and draw that game 2 uh, 2. That's unacceptable. You can go to Barnsley and get a 1 1 draw at the weekend like they did. That's absolutely fine. They've got to cut out those silly games where they drop points. They haven't lost the game in a long, long time, but they're not winning games and they've yeah. got to stop drawing silly ones because that's how they're going to get themselves back in that top six contention. Um, as for Lincoln, yeah, Lincoln, again, all these clubs we're talking about now have had new managers. Of course, Cabela's now coming at Lincoln. He's now having to sort of get going again and, and, and trying to sort of see what is a decent, I'd say good, Lincoln City squad. It is a good squad. It was one that was definitely mentioned before the season. But again, you look at it differently because of the difficult Mark Kennedy period. But it is a good team. It's got injuries in there at the moment. You know, Erohan didn't play at the weekend, but it's a very, very good side. Um, it will need depth. It will need January recruitment. And again, these sides are going to have to get that right if they want to get in that conversation um, post-January. But there we go. There's some really, really good um, teams in there. But again, it's so competitive above them. Barnsley and, and, and Blackpool are fantastic. And they're not in the top six or, you know, I say fantastic, they're not fantastic at the moment, are they? But they're, they're in the they're in the hat for sure, um, and have the definitely have the potential to be a, a fantastic side. So yeah, it, it's really interesting. And you look lower than that. I think, you know, like you say, they're they're probably going to stay where they are. Shrewsbury Villa are in a false position, to be honest. I've never been that impressed by Shrewsbury this season, and they're still in that uh, in that pretty decent position around mid table. I think what's happened there is um, they've won games quite narrowly, and that league is is quite open. It's really compared to other leagues much more open and I'd, I'd go out and say it's probably one of the lower quality league one seasons we've had in a while when it comes to teams being in positions that maybe in other years you probably would have been um uh, maybe punished for ultimately but they've got away with it and, and fair play to them is that sustainable we'll have to wait and see um later on Orient, i think uh, we'll slightly round off a four team so in northampton have been very impressed with them but i think that probably is where they're going to finish and that shouldn't be that shouldn't be questioned. That's a, that's a great place to be. Cambridge, Port Vale, the, the final two. I think with Cambridge, again they've they've lost Mark Bonner, which would have been a bit of a bummer. But ultimately, I don't think I can't see Mark Cambridge going down. I really don't, especially now with, with Neil Harris and, and with Port Vale, Andy Crosby. Those question marks at the start of the season. I actually think, to be honest with you, that he's, he's got them in in a functional way, and he's going to grind results out in you know in those moments. So to be honest with you, I don't see too much changing. I would just say. Lincoln and, and Charlton and potentially Bristol Rovers are the next teams that could step up into that next mini league table outside the top six. Absolutely. Um, again, now we're talking serious, aren't we? Blackpool are just outside the playoffs. The four points outside, I think, in my eyes, they've got a better team than they had at this point three years ago. They've got... Players coming back from injury, the likes of Kyle Joseph that's gradually coming back, the likes of you know Jordan Gabriel as well. Who it'd be interesting to see how Blackpool kind of fit him in because they kind of play a back three with um, Leans and Hamilton, and um, they could play Owen Dale there, you know, as well. And uh, it'd be interesting to see. Well, will CJ Hamilton go further up? Will Jordan Gabriel come back into the side because he's too good not to be playing football if he's fit, Jordan Gabriel. And obviously, it didn't quite work out for him at Forest, but coming to Blackpool for the last few years and done well. The away form at Blackpool needs to pick up, and you can play. You can say they're playing tough teams. You know, I know they beat Portsmouth away. I know they beat Barnsley away. They had loss on the road to Wickham, Lincoln, uh, you know, Cambridge. Now in that run, 
But if you want to be in the top six, you've got to beat teams around your way from home, you know, now and again as well. The form at Bloomfield Road, you can't question. Um, and then you're kind of looking at uh, Barnes, who I think are quite similar to Blackpool, can kind of have an off day and not score or, or lose to someone they shouldn't or drop points from someone, um, like you can see in this table as well. They're only two points, you know, apart, but Barnsley have played mm. two games less as well. So that's could be quite interesting. I then see the top six quite split now. I really do. And, you know, people are saying Steven is going to fall away, Wardy. They're not, are they? 40 points from 22 games. If the points per game times 46, you know, carried on at the rate it's going, things will change. We know that. But Steven will be inside those playoff places. And that just years. Yeah humongous credit. I think they are in a false position because of the game's play. They will come down a couple, but they're still in the playoffs, still picking up points. They'll be disappointed that they didn't win the game on Saturday, but Stevenage, good nick under Steve Evans. He, he's had a couple of job offers, and it believes rather than have come up and you know, a couple of others you know, elsewhere as well, but he's still at Stevenage, you know, with one game to go till the halfway mark. They'll be absolutely delighted, won't they? Yeah, and I think to be honest, I don't think... Like everyone said, that they always the conversation is: Will they drop off? Will they will they fall out as the season progresses? You know, we saw Port Vale and Exeter in that in that uh, top six in the early stages of the season, and they're nowhere to be seen. And Stevenage were sort of in that category too, and they've sort of really, really sort of dug their dug their heels in and, and still find themselves there in in December and, and probably will be in in January. So really impressed, really impressed. Steve Evans is a frustrating manager when you're looking to play against this side, but when you look at what he does with teams and with squads, he's got a very, very good record. Uh, and this Stevenage team is, is suited to Steve Evans to, to the ground. He's got a great side there that he's built over a period of time. He got them promoted. He made some really good additions in January and they look like a really good unit. So, yeah, I, I think really now, because it'd be disrespectful to say that they, they can't be and they're sort of finishing in that, in, that, in that top six. Of course, they're going to be looking over their shoulder and see that, you know, Barnsley and Blackpool, like I said a minute ago, they're going to well and truly believe they can get in there with maybe some more additions over the transfer window and obviously continuing what has been a fairly decent season. There's been some ups and downs, but they've had some good results, hence why they are, you know, where they are just outside the, the playoff spots. But Stevenage, they're going to be very, very confident that, that they can stay in there. They've, they've proven they can compete with the people. They've proven they can get some really, really important results. The question mark is, have they beaten a side yet in that top six chat? I think Derby. I don't like I, they beat Derby, didn't they? Is that yeah. I don't think they, they, we beat them. Um, I can remember. I know Drew, I they got a point Portsmouth. against yeah, going to Portsmouth. If they can win, start winning one of those games, they can start winning maybe some more of those games. Yeah. Say, sorry, they beat me, did you say? No, the, so they've drawn to Portsmouth, drew to Peterborough, right. um, lost away at Bolton, beat Derby, and you said so you beat them, didn't you? Yeah, we beat them. So, yeah, you, they've won. Yeah, it's not bad, is it? It's not really that, but it's not bad. But ultimately, if they want to stay in there, you've probably got to get some 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 more results. And also, they've got to go away from home a few of these times. They've got to go to Oxford. They've got to go to Portsmouth. So, in the second half of the season. But look, I'm not going to take anything away from Stevenage. They have been fantastic. They have got some difficult games coming up, as does anyone in that chat. But... You can't take anything away from them. I've been very, very impressed. I like Steve Evans as a football manager when you're not playing them. That's important yeah. to say. I think you say you say how big it is going away. The next two away games, away at Oatwell on Saturday. I think on New right. Year's Day, they've got to go to Fratton Park. So we will see where Stevenage are. But we've I've kind of glossed over. We haven't. We're going to go back to it. Bolton Wanderers and Derby. If hmm. Bolton would have beaten Portsmouth a week ago from when we're recording this, you know, the, and probably that Bristol Rovers game looks totally different, doesn't it? Where all of a sudden you're yeah. going in confident. If they win both of those games, and I know these are ifs, buts, or maybes, they're on 45. Portsmouth, realistically, they beat Shrewsbury 45 points as well. But now the tough reality of football, they're nine points behind them. So it just shows you how kind of big football can be in terms of a week. Bolton aren't out of it. I know they've lost a quarter of the game, which if you're going for promotion, you don't want to do. Where do you see Bolton out? Because they still are a good side. They do seem to need January a little bit. And they need a couple of reinforcements. I think they need another striker. I think they could do with a midfielder and potentially a defender in there as well. They're not far away from clicking again. They've only lost 11 out of the last 57 games you know, at home. So they have made it a fortress. They just need to kind of get going a little bit, you know, find that spark again. What happened? As you said, didn't you? You said 
Bolton could be a champions, I'll throw back a question at you and I'll come back and answer the your one. Do you still see that as a, I don't know, there's a long way to go. They, if they win, of course, the game and hand on Pompey, it's that gap only turns to six points. Now, I'm not, I'm not pushing my agenda on this. I, I genuinely don't know. I think it's going to be very, very tight. But you mentioned there, you know, you've said it for a while, Bolton could be, could be that number one spot. A lot's happened in a week and they find themselves, you know, a minute ago, quite a few points adrift. Where do you stand on that over a, over a week period? Does that change your perception too much or are you, are you staying with your, you know, ultimately your call you made a couple of weeks ago? I can't look past Portsmouth now. I really no. can't. And you say stick to your guns, but I just looked at Portsmouth and they were electric against uh, Bolton and Yangi came into the fold and look, Portsmouth need January as well. I think a lot of football clubs need January. I don't know why. It's a horrible month. Nobody wants January, but it's a real battle when you go to Fratton Park. And Bolton had chances early on. Dion Charles should have scored. Bod Valson could have scored as well, but they didn't. And Portsmouth kind of got through the game and managed it a little bit better. One thing I will say for Bolton, the next six include Leighton Orient home and away. They've got to go to Lincoln. They play Fleetwood away. They've got Burton and they've got Cheltenham. So they realistically need to win at least five of those six to stand the chance, in my eyes, of getting automatic promotion. So they're not far away, Bolton. Look, 12 wins, three three draws, five defeats. He scored 38 goals, so they are free scoring 1.9 per game and just over a goal per game. It's not really Bolton that. They, know, they are normally under that goal per game. So that is where they've got to improve a little bit. And talking of improvement, uh, Wardy, Derby County also in those playoffs. For as much as we've yeah. slagged them off this season and everyone's given them critics, the two points behind Bolton, who have had a really good season up until the last two, up until the last week, and a week doesn't matter in football. You, you know, you judged on you know, four months worth of work. Yep. The three behind Stevenage were two games in hand. Stevenage beat them, and Stevenage are having a fairy tale of a story. You're having an unbelievable season, and they're only again three points off you with a game in hand. Derby are going well. They normally pick up later on during the season. Paul Warren goes on winning runs. He won you know, five or six on the trot. Should have realistically have won on Saturday. They saw out the game quite nicely until you know they the, the gave the referee a decision to make. They're not doing too badly. And they've only conceded 17 goals as well, which is a true Paul Warren side where they'll concede many goals. They won't score too many goals. I know they still score 35 goals, but they can win a game 1-0, 2-0, and, and, and occasionally they will win 3-4, you know, uh, you know, at home, especially against the like, Northamptons. Yeah, I mean, you look, you look at their goal difference, that's a really good place to start. I think goal difference sometimes is a really good indication of where a team is compared to so around, you know, compared to where they are around others. Um, they're plus 18, Pompey are top on plus 21. They've only got a three, uh, a plus three difference or a minus three uh, difference to compare to Pompey and they're top of the table and we've been waxing lyrical about them all season. Derby have really picked up. Derby have really picked up. And because of that bad start, they've got away with going under the radar. And sometimes Paul Warren has done that, where you look at their Rotherham side in League One a couple of times and you sort of go, eh, I'm not sure. I'm not, I don't know. Maybe it's the year where they just have to stay in League One. They won't go and do that classic Paul Warren thing and win the league or come second and go up. And everybody goes, yeah, classic. And that was the same with Derby, wasn't it? We all sort of looked at him and went, no, nah, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like it's going to click. It doesn't feel like they're going to get going. They're leaving this a little bit too late. Derby, look, I don't think they're going to win the league. I don't think they're going to get, I don't think they're going to win the league. I think Pompey, Bolton, and you have to put Peterborough in there now, but I think realistically Pop Pompey are now pretty heavy favourites to win the title. Let's be frank with it. But Derby, they're going to, I mean, they've done really well to get back in this chat, get back into a place where people start talking about them again because they were turgid in the early stages of the season. They were really, really inconsistent. They were drawing games. They should be winning. They should. They were losing games away from home. They should be should be winning. They were, had a really bad at home record too. But now they've sort of clicked into gear. They're playing a really poor worn style. It's definitely uh, the poor worn that we expected and wanted to see uh, when that, that run was, was going very, very poorly. And now it's starting to really sort of work out. And you sort of read those Twitter comments and everyone's sort of laughing and joking about the poor worn out thing because they're on a great run and they're winning games and, and getting some really important points. And, and now in the playoffs too in December, I think Derby County are going to be a force to reckon with. And when you get these sort of sides that are going under the radar, still getting results, I knew they drew, I know, I know they drew at the weekend, but they should have won that game. And a draw is a draw. When you, when you win five prior to a draw, doesn't really matter. It does, no. but not as much. 
um, they're going to be a side that you sort of go, yeah, they've won. I, I could see this side go, right, they've won eight games, they've drawn one. And then you sort of go, right, this Derby County team really mean business. I think they mean business already, but imagine if that run does continue and they carry on being a force and they're going to be tough to beat, even when they drew, they're going to be tough to beat. So, you know, Paul Warren, we gave him a lot of, you know, a lot of stick here and we gave him a lot of stick on, on T-Lop and on my own channel. We're sort of breaking down the fact that Paul Warren probably isn't getting the best out of this squad. One thing we can guarantee is he looks like he's getting the best out of this squad now. Yeah, absolutely. They've got some tough games coming up. Lincoln at home on Thursday. Wigan away on Box Day. Sold out. Rams away end. Oxford away just after Christmas. Peterborough at home. And then a trip to Fleetwood on nine the points, Sky. Nine points. points. We'll be, we'll be. They can have they can have nine points and uh, we'll we'll take one of the three away. That's fine. There you are. Well, you said the next three, didn't they? And then, you know, eight wins. Yeah. The, the Oxford game will be the game after. The top three then, Wardy. You're involved. Yep. You were six I know, it's amazing. And I know, it, we did this a week ago and happens. Well, I wouldn't even get any, don't get any airtime. But imagine I, we're in third now. I can't, you, you look how close. Even, I think Blackpool playing two games more. You look at Barnsley onwards. I'm not disqualifying Blackpool or anyone for that matter out of this. But Barnsley 35 are only six points behind Peterborough with a game in hand. Portsmouth yeah. are, are in their own league at the minute, and we'll come to them. or we'll give them their own little 30 second piece, 30 segment. That's yeah. all they deserve uh, for, for the work this yeah. season. It's not like they've only lost one in 32. Um, it's so <laughs> close, and anyone can get there. But Oxford doing ever so well. Scoring goals again and 35 goals. No, what was it you scored last season? I think you scored, you know, just in the 40s last season as well, yeah, which isn't terrible. an octave point. And you know, yeah, how many points did you get last season? Was it something like 46, 47 points last yeah, season? Yeah, I think we are a couple of games away, a couple of wins away from actually matching last season's points tally, which is uh quite damning on last season, but a good indication of how yeah. we've improved for sure. Absolutely, and it, it, it was. 47 last season, you scored 49. So you're 14 goals away and nine points away. So you win your next three and you're there. How close are Oxford off Peterborough? You lost to them recently. Peterborough lost one in 15. My opinion, Wardy, they've got the best team in the division, best 11 in the division as an 11. I think Portsmouth have got the best squad and the best unity, and unity and togetherness wins titles, defences win titles, and Portsmouth have got that over Peterborough. But as an 11, I look at it and I kind of think it's phenomenal in every part. Yeah. How far are Oxford off Peterborough and how far off are they off Portsmouth? Because I think those two teams at the moment are the best two teams in the division with Bolton and Derby are on a great run. Oxford are in there as well. That's five unbelievable teams. Stevenage are doing well for themselves. You've got Blackpool and Barnley just outside. It is an unbelievable eight, but you have to compare yourself to the two that are currently in front of you. Are you near? Yeah. Well, based on the performance a couple of weeks ago, no, we're nowhere near Peterborough. They absolutely battered us. Um, I think, look, yeah, but you can't base it on that, on that game alone. Look, on that game, it was... It's, it's like... In terms of where we've been, in terms of the, the squad itself, a fully fit squad, us and Peterborough, I'd say, you know, we, we, if you bring Greg Lee back into the mix, you bring um, Edwards back into the mix, Marcus Brown, you bring these players back into the conversation, Stefan Negru, these players come back. I think the squads, us and Peterborough, you probably said at the start of the season, were quite neck and neck, to be fair. We're sort of, the, we're in that bracket of they could get in the top six, probably going to predict them around seventh or eighth, probably where, probably where Barnsley and Blackpool are. That's probably where us and Peterborough sort of sat. Um, obviously, we've, we've overachieved. We, we're now second and third. I, I actually thought going into the season, there were a few similarities there. A lot of transition. Um, and we were sort of you know, creating a, a good team, some good summer recruitment, but we were sort of really having to sort of feel ourselves around. Um, and look, you look at Peter Brother, they're, they've done a really, really good job. They, they, you look at their recruitment, you look at that talent, you look at that team they've got there, like you say, Napa's, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. And with us as well, you know, we have got a really good squad. We are missing players with injury, but you, know, you look at our season, we've done well. A lot of teams have had injuries, so I'm not using that as an excuse whatsoever. However, you know, like you say, you based on a couple of weeks ago, it, it, it probably is edging towards Peterborough. And when you look at in form sides, Peterborough are one of the best, if not the best, behind Portsmouth in it when it comes to a form table. So, Look, I don't think we're going to get in the top two. I say this right now. I don't think we are. I don't think we are automatic promotion. Uh, I think well, we probably are candidates, but I don't think we are going to finish in the top two. My gut says, and I don't want to jinx it, but I'm only going off what I can see. I think we will finish the top six. I'll probably say it probably will be around fourth or fifth. Um, I think we're going to 
be absolutely fine. I think we're going to get some really good results. I think we could struggle you know, a few times. I think we've got to still go to Fratton Park. We've still got to go to Bolton. Um, you know, we've got some really, really tough fixtures coming up like that, um, you know, post-January. But ultimately, I think we probably will stay in that in that top six. But I don't think we are in the top two uh, coming into the season. That's just what my gut says. And we could finish worse than that. But I hope, for the love of God, that doesn't happen and we stay where we are. Peterborough, one defeat in 15. Unbelievable. Won nine of those. Unbelievable team. But there's one team at the top that cannot be touched. Portsmouth have taken 48 points from a possible 63. I've lost one in 32, are unbeaten in 16 away games, won the last four away games, won seven of the last nine, seven of 10 away from home this season, gone away to some big grounds and big stadiums and, you know, you know, big teams this year and got results to your Wiggins, your Reddins, and, you know, Barnsley got a point away at Derby in the last minute as well, and they got the job done. To win 14 games, they were drawing a couple early in the season, you know, where you know, Stevenage, Bristol Rowers in there as well, getting frustrated. They were coming back. Now we're seeing a different side to this Portsmouth side where the winning comfortably, the scoring goals, two, threes, ten without reply now. The Blackpool game was the best thing to happen to them in my eyes because it kind of gave them a kind of a, a reset button. Like, because I think they were kind of pressurizing, we can't lose, we can't lose. Now they've lost, it's kind of, it's out the system now and they don't think about it, it's done. And it's like, right, we can carry on with the season now and if we lose, we lose. It's happened already. And they're focusing on themselves. At one point, they wasn't, they were focusing on Oxford too much. I hope they derail the season, says John Messina, the former Oxford United man and, you know, stalwart there. This Porter side are unbelievable. Currently on points per game, they're on for 105 points, which will be a record in League One. Yeah, it, no, they've been phenomenal, mate. They've been phenomenal, and I've, I've got a bit of stick for them. I talk about it on my podcast, and people have called me an undercover Pompey fan. That isn't the case by by no means, but you can still speak about how good Pompey have been, and it's hard not to speak about them, isn't it? You know, you're the same. You speak about Pompey so much right now because they are phenomenal. They are phenomenal, and they and they are a side that you can really, really struggle to pinpoint the next obstacle. They're that sort of team. You sort of go, right, they've got that coming up, but actually they're probably going to be absolutely fine. You know, they've got that team coming up, but actually they're going to be fine. We, there's enough evidence to suggest they can beat anybody in this league. And when you've you've provided that evidence, it's so hard not to get excited as a Pompey fan and as an external and as a neutral look at them and go, yeah, they're going to be they're going to be up. They come the end of the season, and right now, like I said a second ago, they they definitely are the the favourites for the title. Not just because of their league position, but because of the way they've gone about certain games, because of the gap. When you look at the points tally, I've been so impressed by Pompey. They've they've built a certain squad that that is built off like you minutes like you said a minute ago, mentality, unity, strength, um, determination, honesty, hard work. They're the key almost mental principles but when you look at the footballing side as well they're playing a really good brand of football they're scoring plenty of goals they look very very difficult to beat they've had some injuries some big injuries Regan Paul has, has been injured but you know even players like Raggett who at the start of the season you thought yeah nowhere near is he going to touch that 11 that's going to be near a, near a title winning side he stepped in he looks great next to Shockness and has done they haven't conceded a goal since Blackpool which is incredible they scored 10 goals in that period too so yeah, mate, I think Pompey right now, I made the, the the bold decision last year of going quite heavy on Sheffield Wednesday, maybe too early. And of course, they they sort of fell away and, and Plymouth and Ipswich took their spot. They still went up, of course. But Pompey right now, it's hard not to think this side are going to be up there. And I mean, up, up there come the end of the season and, and probably in top spot. There's one thing for sure enough, as we can say, this is going out before Christmas. They're going to be top at Christmas. No matter what happens on the 23rd of December, they will be top of the table on Christmas Day. And that shows, I mean, they've been there before, but this feels different, doesn't it? And without plugging my own video, Nappers, this team does feel special for a few reasons. And to be top of the table at Christmas Day whatever happens a few days before, suggests you've got yourself into a pretty healthy place. Plymouth were top last year, season, and all I ever yeah. heard, I know Plymouth and Portsmouth are kind of you know, great fan bases, you know, full stadium every week. Portsmouth are a massive football club. Plymouth are a, you know, a big club as well, but Portsmouth are a massive football club. And, you know, it's not the question of, will they drop away? They've had a question mark at them. We always said, who would they rather lose? Who's the biggest loss, Bishop or Regan Poole? Well, they've lost both. Regan Poole probably won't play again for, for this season. Kobe Bishop's mm -hmm. been, you know, had, had a, you know, a few weeks injury. You know, Marlon Pack's had injuries. 
They've had young players out for him to step in. They've had, you know, Paddy Lane out for a, a little bit during the season as well. They've had a lot of players out. They've had a young manager in there as well. They've had breaks. They've had a, a, a beating as well. They've not scored in games. They went two without scoring. Um, they drew the opening day. Had to score late. Had to always come back. And they've had a lot of questions asked about them. And they've answered every single one of them so far. And I know we're only 20, 21 games in. They've got a tough Christmas period in my eyes. Bristol Rovers and Exeter aren't the easiest of, of, of fixtures because of the type of places that they are. Then you've got Stevenage, Cheltenham, Leighton Orient and Fleetwood twice in that run. Port Vale, Northampton, Carlisle just after that. We'll know a lot more about Pauls with them, but you know the next step is 50 points and then it's 60 points and then it's carrying on the momentum that they got. They got 70 points last season. I'm not sure they'll want to beat that. They conceded 50 goals last season, which was a, a big you know, point to them. They've only conceded 16 this season, which is, if they carry on that record, they're only going to concede about 35. So, well done to Portsmouth. Peterborough, you know, Oxford, Stevenage, Bolton, Derby, Barnsley, Blackpool can still get some out of this season. And then even, your, you know, your Lincolns, your Charltons, or these worlds, we go back. Wardy, if I had to ask you now, the last five minutes or so, if I had to give you yeah. a bottom four... And a top six, where would you yeah. go? And I'll give you um, that. We're not going to agree on the bottom four. I can guarantee on that. I think we uh, may. Um, I think we uh, may. Uh, Cheltenham, I think might fall short. I think Reading will. I think Fleetwood might. And I'm going to put Exeter. In that bottom yeah, four. I agree. I agree with every single one. I think Wigan upwards are safe as houses. I honestly, I think you might see Cambridge and Portwell maybe slip in there a little bit at times. Um, I think Wickham will rise above. Burton will get a new manager in soon. I think Carlisle could stay up. I really do. I think, I think, uh, you know, I make my table predictions, you know, in a few weeks when I've seen a little bit of January, but because it's stupid otherwise. It could be huge. Top six. I'll go yeah. first on this one. Go. I'll probably. Yeah. I know me. T- oh. oh, I think it will be Blackpool sixth. I think right. Blackpool will finish sixth. Blackpool will go on a run. I, I honestly believe that. Uh, I think I'm gonna, Derby I'm gonna will finish down now. fifth. Derby fifth. Oh, it's so tough. Oxford fourth. Peterborough third. Bolton second. Portsmouth first at this moment in time. And that is so harsh on Stevenage. I, I know the seven in front of Blackpool on the same game is played, and it's a little bit disrespectful. I can just see Blackpool going on an unbelievable run. Like they always seem to get January right. However, they need to keep Jordan Rose and Barnsley. I'm missing out on Barnsley as well. I kind of think there's, you know, I'm leaving Lincoln and Charlton. I think Bristol Rovers, you know, could have a sniff. What would you change? I'm just writing mine down here and I'm just making sure I don't miss anyone. Um, I'm going to go Steve is sixth. I reckon Steve Evans. I reckon Steve Evans. He, I hope he you loves do it. it. I hope yeah. you do it. And I think you know something loves the fact they could be doubted. What watch my video, lads? Get in because I just see Blackpool as a team that could go on this run. But the only one thing that's stopping me thinking from Blackpool six because it's Blackpool, Blackpool, Stevenage, Barnsley that it's equal. I've kind of gone Blackpool because I kind of think that they've had the experience in League One as a football club in the past. So a Barnsley, Stevenage, the the <sighs> Barnsley probably the most likely. In my eyes, then Stevens and Blackpool, but Blackpool being playoff kings, they, they just always find a way, don't they? Yeah, and, that, and that's why for me, it's I'm exactly the same as you. I think Stevens, Blackpool, Barnsley are in that are in a bit of a. I know it's harsh because Stevens are fourth. Um, so, but I think even then, understand there's a, there's a bit of a category. There's a bit of a category where those three are probably looking at the entire team, the entire season. Probably where they find themselves. I think Steve will do it. I think Steve Evans is a manager that knows exactly how to find ways to get into positions that maybe people don't think they could do. So I think they're going to be in sixth. Blackpool, seventh. 
I've got Barnsley eight. Well, he didn't ask me to do that, but that's probably where I'm sitting on that. Okay. I think Barnsley are far too. I don't, I just don't. Controversially, people are going to, it's fine. It's your comment section. That was, <laughs> but I said it. Not I, I don't, home, are they? I just don't really think Neil Collins has clicked yet. And I, going forward, there's not a real identity. Defensively, they're a little bit here and there. If they can click, they've lost to the they top can... three at home. By the way, all the top three they've lost to at home. Yeah, I, I, and the home record, like you say, isn't great. They're they're a good team. They've got some good talent in that squad. It's just not quite clicking yet, not quite gelling, and not quite coming together. Key department's not quite working. Um, disagree with me? Absolutely fine. I can take that. Um, Oxford fifth. Um, I think we're going to be fourth or fifth. I think I can see it in the middle of the, of the top six. That's fine. And I would snap your hand off for that because I didn't think we'd get in that top six. I thought this transition would take much longer. Last season, like you said, we were definitely at this point in the season looking like relegation candidates. To be in that place, I don't care. You know, if, we've, if we could have been pushing with Pompey, and that was the early agenda and the early chat, I'll snap your hand off for fifth. Oxford should not be competing um, this early, I don't think. But we are, so great. Um, Derby fourth. I can't look past Derby looking in, in great shape. I've gone Peterborough third. Um, although I think Peterborough and Derby could easily swap. I think Peterborough and, and Derby will be fourth and fifth. I'll lock in fifth for Derby. Uh, sorry, third for Derby and, and Peterborough third. I think they will be either uh, one or two in those places. Um, and then one or two in terms of the first and second, I've gone Pompey top and I've gone Bolton uh, in, in second. Um, so yeah, Pompey Pop, top, Bolton second, Peterborough third, Derby fourth, Oxford fifth. And I've got Stevenage in sixth, but it's so tight, and I, it is. I, I wouldn't. It will change in three weeks. I can guarantee that. It, it it really will in the Christmas period in January as well. Obviously, I make my league one prediction. They always do one at the start of January, and then kind of I need the January window for open for about ten or fifteen days to kind of see, and then I always do one at the end of March, at the start of Easter, They're like just the top six and the bottom four. So it could change. Let us know yours down in the description. But that is where we'll end, Wardy. Go over there. Go and subscribe to his channel. He, he's producing some cracking League One content. You know, he wanted the best over there as well. And, um, you know, tactical insight and, you know, you know, you know a big round on a Sunday um, as well. Do you want to go and give it a quick plug? Yes, mate. I really appreciate the nice comments there, mate. Yeah, it's um, it's good fun right now. I think me and Napa are in the same boat. We're sort of really enjoying how this League One season's going. Uh, and there's so much so much talk about, you know, we've gone on 48 minutes and we can go on for another 48 minutes talking about this League One season. It, it's that it's that exciting. I think our content both reflects that. It's been it's been good fun, even though Napa's is you know, following Fleetwood this season, which isn't as fun. I think he's even, you know, even he can find some enjoyment in League One. Um so far so yes mate definitely if you could check it out that'd be fantastic on the road to seven thousand. so which is a, a really good milestone that we could hopefully hit sooner rather than later but of course the most important thing is um we enjoy christmas and we and we enjoy the football over christmas because ultimately it's uh, i think for me my favorite time of the year when it comes to football just switching on the tv and watching a random game of football that's on a tuesday and you don't really know what date it is that's the best thing about it so it's been great to to chat uh, ahead of a, a very busy schedule to, um tom i need to call you tom you could be jake in the intro ben <laughs> no I didn't. What are you on about? Oh, no, no. That didn't, didn't make the cut, make the did cut. it? That won't make the cut. That's fine. It's one all. There we are. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Please like, please subscribe. We're so close now to 12,500 subscribers. Again, massive appreciation to Jack for coming on. Until next time, I will see you later. Thanks very much for watching. Up the league one.